fair, man. I mean, here you are, you're someone who wants an education, you want to make something of yourself, and they won't give you one lousy loan. I really, I, I just wish there was some way I could help you out, Jonathan. Thanks, Adam. Hi, fellas. Hi. The Hi. price of stuff today is completely out of bounds. You know what it was? It, you know how much they charged me for toothpaste? Listen, Jonathan has a problem. $1.69. I'm going to tell you, I can, I can have my teeth yanked for that price. <laughs> Look. The, what's he doing? Where, where, where's he going? He's moving out. What do you mean, moving out? Oh, is it something I did? Oh, I know. I know. I know. I'm sorry. The towel's in the bathroom. I put them down because it's cold in there. I walk around with my socks and I've got holes in my socks. Uh, strange as it may seem, it's nothing you did, Mr. Newton. I, it was the cooking. The cooking. I know, Jonathan. I'm sorry. I put too much pepper in the oatmeal, but it tastes bland. You know? I know. I know. Gramps. Huh? Jonathan is dropping out of school. Dropping out of school? Mm -hmm. Because of why? What? Well, I applied for a loan for next semester, but with the cutback in funds, by the time they got to me, they were out of money. Oh. What's oh, money, huh? How much uh, are we talking about? $2,000. $2,000? Yeah. It might as well be $2 million, which before inflation was 2000 <laughs> Well, don't get too excited. After all, after all, Jonathan, miracles happen. I don't believe in miracles. I didn't say miracles. I said miracles happen. That's a three-year-old that's running in the fourth race of Meadowland. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed. So our work a half 48, boy. <laughs> miracles happen. That's right. Getting the old blood, the circulation going from the top of the head to the tip of the toes. <laughs> Short trip. <laughs> you know, for a moment there, I thought we might have had something going, but you can forget it now. Don't bother to leave your shades up. <laughs> All right. Put everything back in its place, Jonathan. You're not moving one foot off this campus. What are you talking about? No, I'm not talking about anything. But money does talk. Listen to this. <laughs> Gramps, there's... There's $500 there. Yeah, it's just a partial payment. Mr. Nugent, I couldn't take $500. Oh, look, it's, it's... You're not taking anything. It's a proper loan. You'll pay me back with the interest. Just, it's a business deal. Well, wait a minute. Where did you get $500? Little girl, three years old. Well, she won the fifth race at the Meadowlands and paid a big price. <laughs> Mr. Nugent, I can't take money from you. Wait, why not? I'm sorry, I just can't. I mean, well, you might need it for uh, later on. Jonathan, for me, this is later on. <laughs> Yeah, it's open. Sure, it's open. But and anyone could just walk in. Anybody just did walk in. <laughs> did you see the newspaper? Let's hear it. There's been a burglary a block away from here. Now, you better mm. keep that door locked and all those valuables out of sight. Look at all that money there. Uh, and you just, just pay me my rent hey, and wait, hide the wait, rest wait, wait, of it. <laughs> Your rent isn't due for two weeks. No. Now that... Now that she's talking oh, about no, the burglar. Come on now. Hey, Please. look at Jonathan. Take I this just, money. I the burglar may get it. Put, put it away. Put it away. I don't know what to say. I promise I'll pay back every cent of it. I know you will. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks an awful lot. It's okay. <laughs> He's a nice young man, but an awful hugger.
you hear the terrible news? One of the Mandrell sisters is a brother? <laughs> Worse. This is really very disturbing. I almost hate to tell you about it. Tell us what? There's bad news, good news, and bad news. There's been a burglary right here in our very own building. Oh, well, well what's the good news? The police got a good description of the burglar. Well, that's great. Now, what's the bad news? He's short, chubby, wears a gray jogging outfit and a baseball cap. You're putting us on, right? May I vote for rent control if I'm lying? <laughs> Mrs. Green, you're not really implying that my I'm grandfather has... I'm not implying, had... I'm reporting. Me and Howard Cosell, we tell it like it is. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I absolutely refuse to believe that Mr. Nugent would steal. Well, of course, neither do I, but maybe not as Mr. Nugent. Maybe as one of his other personalities, like Robin Hood. <laughs> Mrs. Green, what are you talking about? I'm talking about what happens sometimes to men's minds when they get older. My first husband, may he rest in peace, he went through periods of confusion in his last years. Once he thought he was a soldier, once a circus clown, once a department store. <laughs> Hold it. So you think Mr. Nugent is vacationing in Never Never Land, huh? He could be. Well, I don't think we should jump to conclusions. No. Right, neither do I. Right. And Mrs. Green, whatever you do, don't mention any of this to Gramps, oh, okay? Oh, Adam, please. Me? I'm the soul of tact. <laughs> Mrs. Green? Hi there, Macy's. <laughs> what did she mean by that? Not a thing, not a thing. <laughs> Have you got a feeling that lately Mrs. Green is getting a little... yah ya? Yeah? <laughs> Pull out your hand. Here we are. This will make a, uh, a thousand. Here's another payment, huh? <laughs> another uh, long shot come in, Mr. Nugent? No, I, I, I got this uh, portion from uh, my bank. <clears throat> oh, wait, wait a minute, Gramps. Well, hold on a second here. How could you save $500? I mean, you're always telling me you can barely make it on your Social Security. I told you that 10 years ago, I, I put $20 in the bank. Yeah. And uh, at compounded interest at 12.12%, compounded annually, without penalty of early uh, withdrawal, <laughs> it uh, actually comes to $500. You hit it, $500 right on the nose. Oh, they begged me. They begged me, Jonathan, not to take it out of the bank. Thought there would be a, a run on the bank. <laughs> In fact, they even offered me a cuckoo clock. Did you say cuckoo? That's right. Cuckoo clock. I didn't want a cuckoo clock. <laughs> Well, I'll get some more of my money out of my other banks for you. I mean, cuckoo clock. Can you imagine offering me a cuckoo clock? When I want to know what time it is, I'll look at my wrist. I don't need a fat bird with a lot of feathers. <laughs> he's never um, had this much money before. So, where do you think he's getting it? Where do I think he's getting it? Yeah. You want to know what I think? I think we shouldn't think about it. That's what I think. <laughs> Right, right. I mean, after all, this evidence, it's, it, it, it's circumstantial. That's it. Right. Took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. Circumstantial evidence. Oh, sure. I mean, there are probably dozens of short, chubby right. grandfathers <laughs> jogging around this campus. <laughs> wearing baseball caps. Aren't there? Please. Get <laughs> oh. Lord of Choppy Tea. Tea da pa. Do 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 boom. Boom boom be do. Be do. Come on, Ollie. Don't take all night to throw away one card. Bernard, I happen to be thinking. Well, I wish you would hurry up with your thinking. Because when we started playing, I had a hair. <laughs> I'm going to give you a card that you can't possibly use. Do with it what you may. <laughs> Jen. <laughs> but 45 points. 45? I don't want to hear about that. So far, let's see. You owe me, or should I say Mr. Luck, $15. I don't want to hear about that either. I'm going to deal. Play another game. Okay, deal a card. Answer the door for me, will you, Bernard? Oh, it'll be a pleasure. Sure. Be a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Just a friend. 
friendly game of cards, I swear it was. I believe you. You believe me? And you call yourself a cop? Hey, it's okay, you can go. Yes, sir. Everybody's afraid of the cops. Yes, it is. It's uh, ridiculous, isn't it, officer? <laughs> Oliver Nugent? Go! Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. And you can mark me down for a pair. Mr. Nugent, I'm afraid you'll have to come with me. I never dance with policemen. <laughs> with you? What, 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 what for? Why should I come with you? Down to headquarters for questioning. But, but what? Well, there's been burglaries in the area, and we have a positive identification on you, and I have a warrant for your arrest. Oh, wait a minute, there's... Must be some mistake. I've, I've done some wrong things in my life. Sure, I, I erased the. Pen. We have courts to decide that, <laughs> Mr. Nugent. Yes. I'm going to read you your rights. All right, officer. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court or any other proceedings. You have the right to consult an attorney before making any statement or answering any questions. You may have him present with you during questioning. If you decide to answer, you questions, coming with me? <laughs> If you decide to answer questions... <laughs> Take a seat on the bench, please. Uh, I'll be right back. I want you to know, officer, that with this mistake, I won't forget anything, including your badge number, which is 8785. 8786. Well, you see, anybody can make a mistake. You see how easy it is? <laughs> Have a seat. Detective will be right with you. Uh, you in here for? Assault with a deadly weapon. But, uh, you didn't do it, did you? Yeah, I did. It's nice to meet an honest fellow in a place like this. What, what, what did they grab you in here for? Second degree murder. Would you like to talk about it? Yeah, I mean, would you like to get it off your chest? Just forget I ask any questions. Listen, I'm telling you that Reagan was an actor before he boys, became president. Boys, I'm so glad both of you were here. Mrs. Green, you're looking rather frazzled. What is it? Yeah, is anything wrong? Yeah. Bernard, you tell him. Adam, but the... He and your grandfather were here playing cards. And then when they... Tell him about the policeman. What policeman? What policeman? The one who came here looking for your grandfather. A, a policeman came to the door? Don't interrupt. Bernard, go and ahead. Then when the... And tell him about how he took him away in handcuffs. And then well, handcuffs? Yeah. Gramps? That's the reason I wanted Bernard to tell you. I didn't have the heart to do it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. My grandfather's in jail? I'm afraid uh, he is, Adam. I better go call my dad. You think that's a good idea? I mean, he and your dad don't exactly hit it off. I know that. I'm going to call him anyway. Mr. Nugent in jail. For me? Bernard, you believe he's innocent, don't you? Well, of course the man's innocent. Because if he was guilty, he'd be back on the street by now. <laughs> I'm Detective Marone. Yes, nice to know you. Well, I can see that you're busy. Maybe we can do this another time. <laughs> Sit down. Oh. Oliver Nugent? Yo! Uh, yes. Age? 66 and innocent. Innocent. <laughs> you run in a gray jogging outfit? Yes, I run in a gray jogging outfit. You wear a baseball cap? Yes, I wear a baseball cap. Short and chubby? No, just a normal size baseball cap. <laughs> I was talking about you. Well, what do you think? Short and chubby. Look, that's not going to be a part of my permanent record, is it? I was going on a diet next week with stretching exercises and everything. 
What, Detective Maroon, you do believe that I'm innocent, don't you? Hey, Nugent! Yo! You got a visitor. Who is it? Your son-in-law. certainly gotten yourself into a peck of trouble this time, eh? Please, George. Stop talking like that. Talk like a regular person. As you know, the entire family is quite well aware of your little peccadilloes. Don't talk like that. You're in the USA. Talk like a citizen, will you? Oliver, we are all very well aware of your little strangeness, but to stoop so low as to burgle. Burgle? <laughs> I didn't burgle anything. <laughs> and a man is innocent until proven guilty. Well, Oliver, that may take weeks, even months. The courts are jammed. They're jammed to the jib. Jib? You mean I could, I could stay in there and rot? No need to be dramatic, Oliver. As it so happens, I've already posted bail for you. $1,000 of my hard-earned interest generated from my tax-exempt municipal bonds. <laughs> you do it. I'd never hear the end of it. I'm doing this for the family, Oliver. If you could have seen your daughter, my wife, tossing and turning, getting seasick on the waterbed, unable to sleep, <laughs> frantic with consternation over your incarceration. I, look, look, I'll do it on one condition. Get my jacket. All right. Get the jacket. <laughs> do me a favor. <laughs> Take care of the little guy. Act like a regular son-in-law. <laughs> of course. Thank you very much. It's been delightful. <laughs> Hi. Hi. You know, uh, I gotta get a smaller ball. <laughs> Where's your grandfather? He's out jogging. Oh. You know, uh, it's really good to have him home again. Yeah, but just until the trial. Yeah, I know. I never thought I'd say this, but if he wasn't living here, I'd really miss him. But why don't you tell him that? I know he'd love to hear you say that. It's not easy for me to say things like that. I know. Maybe I'll write him a note and have the guard pin it to his pillow. <laughs> It's not me. I am me. Well, then who's Mrs. Green writing? <laughs> the real burglar. That's right. Mrs. The real Green, burglar. Call the police. We'll hold him. Hold me back, Mrs. Green. Oh, yeah. Don't let me get my powerful hands oh, on him. No, no. Oliver, he looks just like you. Well, of course he does. Don't you see? Mr. Nugent went jogging every day, and this guy obviously knew that, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. So while you were out jogging, he was obviously robbing the apartments. Sure. To make it look like Gramps did it. Yeah. However, he made one fatal mistake. What's that? I don't know. I just always wanted to say that. Friends, I must apologize to you. For what? For being so suspicious of you. But look, I'll make up for it. I promise. Yeah, how? Not in front of the children. <laughs> Not in front of me, either. I'll go call the police. Yeah. Oh. Finally caught you, huh? Well, young man, before you start impersonating anybody again, you ought to really look them over. And if you're going to impersonate me, you've got to get a little of that off! <laughs> Hey, 
Hey, what are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm writing. Writing what? A novel about my experiences with the prison system. Yes. It'll be dynamite. It'll break this town wide open. But you're only in jail for three hours. Well, it doesn't have to be a, a long novel. It's one of those little short paperback jobs. Short but powerful. That's the title. Short but powerful. I'll sell it to the movies for picture rights, and Robert Redford can play me. Robert Redford? Yeah. So I can see what I look like with hair. Listen, I want to ask you a question. Go ahead, shoot. I want to know where you really got the $2,000 that you gave to Jonathan. I told you, from the racetrack and, and uh, my bank and one of my other banks. Mm. I checked the racing results and there was no horse called Miracles Happen. There wasn't? No. And there's only one bank in Sheffield and they never heard of you. You never heard of me? No. Huh? Did they ever hear of Miracles Happen? No. <laughs> you never heard of the horse or me? No. Look, Adam, I figured if I told Jonathan the truth, he'd never take the money. What is the truth? Well, you see, I, I had this solid gold watch that your grandmother had given me on our 10th wedding anniversary. Uh -huh. With gold prices going up the way they are... Oh, you mean you sold it? No, I'd never sell a watch like that, Adam. I pawned it. Oh, no, Gramps, not that watch. Look, things like that are only good to, to help other people. And I don't need memories to hang around my wrist. No, with memories of your grandma, Adam, I keep those memories locked right in my heart. <laughs> you know something, Gramps? You're a regular little poet. <laughs> you typing lately. Huh? How's the novel coming? Oh, I, I dropped it. Why? I thought you were doing great. Why'd you drop it? Oh, I didn't drop the book. I I dropped the typewriter. <laughs> Gramps? Yeah? Why'd you drop the typewriter? Oh, uh, don't be a wise guy. <laughs> Come on. You can you, you keep up with me if you can. Huh? All right. It's oh. tough. I'll try. Wait a minute. <laughs> Stay tuned for Hopper Valley as a hypnotist turns Flora into Stella's biggest fan. Then make room for Danny Thomas and Barbara Mandrell and the Mandrell sisters. If you ask anyone who saw last week's Saturday Night Live, they'll tell you it was the best show ever. This Saturday, the show will be even better with host James Coburn. Don't miss Saturday Night Live later tonight.